Do you use a flight simulator? Would you like to have a throttle quadrant to use with X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? In this video, I'm going to show you how to put together your own throttle quadrant that will have two throttle controls, two prop controls, and two mixture controls so that you can fly all of the uh, single and twin engine aircraft in X-Plane and in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, without having to use up to 12 different keys on your keyboard to set those up and down. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how to make one for about $50-$60 uh, uh, with stuff that you can put together at home uh, with, with, with little, little programming skills and make your own throttle quadrant. Uh, so of course you can adapt it to, to make what you want. Uh, what do you need for this? You'll need a little project box like this. Um, I got this one. Uh, I actually wish I had a plastic one because this is metal. It's going to be a little bit trickier to to cut um, for for my control levers, and, and then for control levers uh, to be on the cheap side, we're going to use these little uh, slide potentiometers. And all this does is just vary the resistance as you as you slide that. Um, lever up and down and so we're going to use these as our uh, throttle propeller mixture controls we're just going to get uh, six of these uh, and these by the way uh, they're anywhere from like like two dollars to three dollars each these were three dollars because they came with the little the little nubs on them which are kind of nice so you don't have to go and pick out nubs so at three dollars a pop this is eighteen dollars uh, your case is going to run you if you get a, a nice plastic one it might be like six dollars up to this one was about twelve dollars really nice case maybe a little bit too nice for our purposes but um, I'm hoping I'll be able to cut it with a little Dremel wheel uh, and then the, the the main component that you're going to need is uh, some type of Arduino and for this project I really recommend the Arduino Teensy as um, it's 20 bucks and it has uh, built-in routines that you can load up to interface USB as a flight simulator joystick which is great uh, so we're going to use that and we're going to take advantage of the fact that that allows up to uh, six analog controls. The Teensy 3.2, the one that I'm using, they're great little, they're great little market microcontrollers you program in C. So you probably already know how to do it. Uh, but again, you won't really need much programming skills because they, they have examples for you that, that come with the Arduino uh, IDE and Teensy plugin. So you can actually get started with pretty much pretty much zero programming skills. So, and then the nice thing about this is you won't have a big bulky item sitting on your desk. So this is designed to be, you know, pretty quick and compact. Um, these are little slider, you know, these little sliders don't take up a lot of space. We're gonna get like, uh, we'll be able to fit at least uh, six going across here. Of course, they'll be underneath and just the slider will poke through. So it'll be a compact design uh, for your purposes. If you want to, you can add additional buttons, whatever you want to do. You can put a screen on there. You can have, you know, whatever controls in there. For my purposes, I wanted just a simple uh, throttle quadrant. Do you want to spend a lot of money? Do you want to spend a lot of time? So it's going to be a little bit of a, a hack job, um, but when it's all done, you won't really be able to tell uh, on the outside of that. This is a simple sketch here to uh, measure out, see exactly where I'm going to draw the cutting lines for the box, because basically I'm going to be drawing those same lines over here on top. Then I'm gonna use a Dremel to, to cut lines in here. It's kind of thick aluminum. It's not gonna be an easy task. Uh, here I'm just going to drill holes where I mount each of the slide pods to the case. Since I have to cut lines in the box anyway for, for the sliders to, to poke through, I might as well just drill these holes in there so I have something secure to mount them to. Here you can see each of the finished holes, they're not perfect. And now I'm just cutting here with the, the cutting wheel uh, each of the, the six slots in the case and this is really what took the longest. Alright so here's that metal after it's been cut out and since I used just a Dremel to, to cut the slots where the slide potentiometers are going to go, uh, it looks kind of a little sketchy there but I sanded it all down so it doesn't have any sharp edges 
it just doesn't look good right now because there's places where I, I hit the, um, the finish with the Dremel. What I could do about that is go through it and after I'm done just paint it. So before I mount the slide potentiometers, the first thing that, that I wanted to do was check how linear these are. And, and of course you want to purchase, make sure you get linear slide potentiometers uh, for audio applications. Sometimes they'll, they'll have logarithmic ones that are used for volume control, etc. What we want is linear ones. And these are cheap products and they have variances. They're only rated 20% accurate. So that means that even though this is a 10K uh, slide pot, it, the total resistance, for example, might be you know only 9K, you know, or it could be 11K, right? So there's some sort of variance there, and there's also variance in in the linearity to where you know this midpoint might not be exactly 5K, right? And what matters is that the ratio of that resistance gives you a very linear voltage as you adjust that ratio. Even more important than that, for example, if you're using them to control your your throttle you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pair together like varied slide pots. And I'm just gonna check and match up two at a time. They give me the closest amount of um, linearity with respect to each other. In this step, I am fastening the slide potentiometers and testing that each of the slide potentiometers, each of the, the levers is able to make the full travel. Uh, you'll notice that I touched up the scratches with just a sharpie for now. I think the right way would be to use some uh, model paint. Uh, matte black would probably look best on this. There is a sheen, does shine a bit. I think a matte black would be, would be best. All the sliders are fit in here pretty well. You do need to make sure when you're cutting out the, the lines that you leave enough space uh, so it doesn't rub against the, the posts. Once that's done, you got the little knobs these knobs are, are perfect for this, for, for something small. If you had access to a 3D printer, if you were, you could actually shape them like the real knobs on, a, on an actual throttle quadrant. You could have the, the black circle for the throttle. You could have blue crown propeller control and the red sun shape for mixture control knob. This step here is, is optional. And you can see I've got this little PCB board that I'm soldering a, an IC socket into that board. Both of these things are optional. I just like to do it. Uh, the board does add about $4 of cost to this. You can forego that and just solder the wires directly right onto the pads of the Arduino. Uh, it is designed to be able to do that. I like to have it mounted to a board and then I can mount that board somewhere inside uh, it also gives me a little flexibility if I want to add additional circuitry later on, maybe some buttons, uh, or uh, maybe if I wanted to put if I want to put a cap in here for for some power filtering, uh, that would be possible. Uh, easier to do with this board versus just having the wires attached directly to the Arduino. The socket helps because you know if you were to burn out your Arduino, you can just pop out the old one and, and put a new one in there. Not that I anticipate doing that, but. This is such a dead simple circuit. You don't need any external components. Uh, everything is done inside the Arduino on the, on the little mini Arduino PCB. Here I have the socket soldered on along with the little connectors for each of the six analog inputs, as well as some leads soldered in connecting the analog ground and the 3.3 volt rail. Each slide pot is going to get a connection to the analog ground and the 3.3 volt rail and one of the analog signal inputs. Here's the back side. Here I'm sliding in the, the heat shrink tubing that I'm going to use to to cover up where I solder the, the analog leads to the slide potentiometer posts. I like to do that just to prevent any inadvertent shorting of the power line or the, the ground line with, with my leads coming in. Uh, here you can see where I've done uh, the wire splice and, and also some additional heat shrink tubing. Uh, so here's my six analog leads and the two uh, power leads, uh, analog ground and 3.3 and, and volts. So this is all ready for assembly. Here's the bottom side. 
This USB header is optional. I got it from SparkFun. It's $2.50. I like that I can detach the USB cable. Uh, that way if my, my cable wear is out, I can just uh, replace a, an inexpensive cable versus having to go in and, and mess with anything inside the box. It's totally optional though, in the sense that I could have just run the USB cable right directly into the USB port directly onto the Arduino. I can connect the the analog ground and 3.3 and volt rail here. And go ahead and close this box up. Be careful not to pinch any of the wires. Now you can see everything kind of back in there. Obviously there's a lot more space than, than I needed, so uh, you could use a smaller box. Uh, I would just, if, if you can find something plastic, that would make this build a lot easier. Four screws on each side. And you can see there's little little rubber feet that I that I cut out for the, the bottom to keep it from sliding around. And that's it. That's a complete box right there. I might put some labels uh, just for fun. And that's it. Not much to it. Once you have your Arduino connected through USB, you can start programming it. Uh, there's two pieces of software that, that you'll install for that. One is the Arduino IDE, uh, and then the second part is the TeamZ plugin that has all the functionality and, and libraries for the TeamZ. Once those are both installed, uh, you're going to open up the IDE and you will see examples for uh, both the, the regular standard Arduino, uh, API and then also for the Teensy product. So here I've opened up just a, a generic blink sketch and and for the Teensy you can go in here and we can open some examples. So examples and there's a section here for Teensy joystick complete. And this really has everything that you need and more than, than what you need. So what we'll do is uh, take the number of buttons and set that this to zero and we don't need because we don't have any buttons of course if you have buttons you can you can add those in there and then once we're done here we're going to go over to tools and we're going to select USB type flight sim controls joystick okay um, and then once you've done that that's really it and you go to verify and then program or upload uh, and this will upload your your program to the Arduino. And then once you've connected it, you'll be able to go over here and see in the control panel. View devices and printers. And you'll see your new Teensy flight controls and you'll be able to see all the sliders. Now you'll notice that the X and Y axis uh, get mapped into this little 2D square. Uh, that is not how the game is going to interpret it. Uh, you'll be able to map that to any of these other kind of sliders here. But you can notice, uh, you'll notice you get the full range here, which is great for all of these controls, and that's what you want to see. And if you had any buttons mapped, you would also see those over here. And setting up the controls in the flight simulator is pretty easy. We just go over here to options, controls, and in this window we'll slide over to uh, Teensy flight sim controls. And we can look at everything that's assigned here under power management. And of course we've assigned uh, mixture props and, and throttle here. And you can see in this, um, in this window here, we've got them already assigned. You can set it up however you like. Uh, this is what worked for me, uh, but there's multiple ways of doing it. And it's pretty easy to set up here. All right, so now we're gonna look at what this looks like in game after we've mapped each of the sliders to each of the engine controls that we want. So we're gonna take off in this Baron. All right, so looking at this in game, we can see how the controls here link from the throttle quadrant into the, the game. 
So in this example, I'm going to put my mixture all the way rich and my props high and I'll have my throttle, I'm going to go ahead and advance it all the way forward. Take the brakes off. We'll go ahead and take off here. One of the nice things about this is you can, you can be in the regular view out of the cockpit and because you have a physical throttle quadrant here, even if it's just a basic uh, compact simplified one, you can see where you have the throttle setting out without having to change your views in the game. So here we are taking off. Let's put our gear up. And we can simulate a little bit of an engine failure here by just pulling your mixture back. Okay. And I have to compensate with a lot of right rudder. I can feather that prop. And now I'm simulating using this, this six channel throttle quadrant. That's all there is to putting together your own $50 throttle quadrant for use in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 or X-Plane. I didn't show X-Plane, but I, I did a lot of testing on that. It works really good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Good luck with your project and thanks for watching.